Hey, welcome back to another Stardust tutorial. Today I wanted to look at volumes inside of Stardust. So if we go to their website here, you can see that they have some examples and links to some tutorials on creating very specific uh, in-depth uh, volume setup. So here's one taking a uh, particle system and converting that trail into a volumetric render. And then here's one with an OBJ dance sequence of a guy, same thing, kind of rendering that as a volume that looks like uh, stylized files or something that's really cool. And then also you can look at uh, rendering volumes as meshes itself. So that's what I wanted to go over. Uh, in 1.6, really the big feature is being able to add the volumetric rendering of those VDBs. Um, and I always just kind of reference their uh, user guide. They go over all the different settings, what they mean, uh, and kind of a general overview of some of their uh, properties or nodes that exist inside of Stardust. It's a great jumping off point. And also here's a new layer with Stardust. Uh, going to their presets and going to their volume examples is kind of like a quick way to get started with volumes inside of After Effects. So looking at the different examples here, you can see that they have one for Boolean, Noise, Spheres, which is creating a single mesh from multiple meshes, rendering a emitter based trail as clouds and then also loading an external VDB and rendering that as well. It's a lot of information to cover at the implementation inside of Stardust. So in the first example I wanted to show, if you don't know what a VDB is, it's kind of thinking of your, your pixel your resolution, but with the third dimension and thinking of it as a grid based uh, resolution representation of models through a mesh or like in the other examples, like the smoke as a volume. And so I set this up to kind of explain, like this is a five by five by five cube to kind of represent how you're seeing resolution in space with a, a grid based uh, volume. And so thinking of that again through another example. So here is two uh, primitive spheres that I've created with uh, Stardust, the, the model node. And I have it connected to a null, which is animated. And these two things are kind of moving together and apart. And then by inputting both of those as inputs to this volume node here, you can see that instantly I'm able to make something that has created a mesh for those two, unifying them. And then by using a uh, filter function, I'm able to smooth that out and have them feel almost like meta balls. So you can, you can see instantly how this can be very powerful to creating some really cool meshes. If you're familiar with Cinema 4D, it's like having the volume uh, of your mesher inside of After Effects, which is fun. And bonus points for being able to actually hit export on this and export out this model if you're really happy with it, if you created something procedural that you really like. Uh, again, also kind of fun, same thing as like being able to do those different functions and operation, operations that a volume benefits from. So here is the same kind of situation where I have a sphere as my default model primitive. I'm gonna pipe that into my volume. And my second thing I'm gonna pipe in is my particle system here. So here I have a particle system that's just emitting uh, spheres and they're scaling over their life. And you can see how quickly that uh, those two merge together. And you can see on my volume note here, it's set to add. Those two set together can kind of create some cool, interesting organic shapes. Uh, what's also fun is that you can still, you know, since I'm applying a material to this, it's a mesh, you can play with all the properties, uh, reflectiveness, refraction, a subsurface, and bump map, all of that. You know, you still have access to that to create some really cool, interesting textured objects. One note I will say is that in the model node here, when you have this set to input the its source from this volume, uh, under texture mapping, I usually set this to spherical in this instance, because if you try to use the UVs of the model, it would be kind of uh, scaled a lot all over it. And it's kind of difficult to, to use. So I usually just use spherical, it works well. And you can see that by, if I go to the material and apply a diffuse texture, I have a checkerboard in here. You can see how, you can see how that updates and, and works well on this undulating surface that's created from these two merging. And then also I could, there is a, if you mouse over this volume node here, and I drag this secondary input, which it turns green when I mouse over it. This is kind of like if you wanted to do a different operation, you can drag this to your emitter. And then I can set this to difference, which then uh, sub sub subtracts that emitter system from that sphere, which is cool and gets this nice uh, look. Or you could also do intersection, which would generate 
the uh, surface of just those spheres uh, intersecting the uh, primitive. So there's a lot of fun that can be had with this, like creating interesting particle systems and doing different operations between them. So that's a lot of fun. And then the last thing I kind of wanted to quickly glance over was rendering them as volumes. So it's kind of the same setup here. I have an emitter that's emitting particles from a sphere outwards. And there's an auxiliary node to create trails from those. And I'm piping both of those into a volume node, which is adding them together. So they're it's unifying them to create one surface. And the difference here is on the model itself, instead of leaving this to file to get the, the mesh data from this volume, I have it set to volume. And then the material itself is also set to volume. So this is what's kind of new in 1.6 is this ability to change your material type to volume, which then gets you access to a lot of the parameters that you would expect from uh, other packages where you've uh, generated volume. So you have uh, density, emission, and uh, transparency uh, absorption in here to play with. And what's cool is that it'll also, if you're um, reading in external VDBs, you can read in the density and the temperature channels to create some unique looks or kind of get them to match how you, uh, the external sources. Like uh, my example that I have is loading an external Embergen uh, default scene where it's like a torus on fire. Here you can see that it, it looks, you know, it's, it's a one point light system. It's creating nice shadows and it's a nice volume and density and everything. But um, what I have missing is that kind of fire effect. So if I go to my shader on it, I have it set to reading the input channel of temperature and then I can set this emission amount to one and it'll map this gradient, these color values to uh, the volume using the temperature channel, which is a, a lot of fun. Uh, and then I have another light in here just to look at it. And this is also using absorption. So I can turn off absorption and you can see how that is affecting the volume, how it's uh, absorbing some of those lights and making thicker parts versus uh, just a more unified uh, thin look. There's a lot of customization that can be had here to play with the, uh, you can remap the density, uh, you can color it, you can affect how the shadows are working with from the light sources and how the shadows are working on it, on its uh, density. And yeah, there's a, there's a lot of cool things to play with. So that is like a billion, <laughs> a, a big thing to drop, to go through, to rush through all this. But I just kind of wanted to explore how uh, VDBs are implemented inside of Stardust, uh, the cool features you can uh, do with it and how great that the initial presets are of getting you set up and running right away with all the appropriate nodes that you need. And then also some examples of piping some uh, traditional node basing emitters into the volumes to get some fun interaction. Yeah, hopefully that was informational to like the new features inside of Stardust and please share any examples of things that you make with this. Thanks.